There he is. The destroyer. The destroyer of plants. I got rid of him. Hopefully. Anyway. I flicked him really hard. I like broke the <laughs> broke the leaf. I flicked him so hard. I need to remove this bottom leaf down here. It's dying. And the other bottom one's probably gonna die too. I also want to keep this cucumber plant just on one stem going up, which I think it doesn't look like it's branched out anywhere yet, so maybe this maybe this uh, Chicago pickling variety has been bred to not branch off. I'm trying to walk around barefoot when I first come out in the morning <clears throat> just to check on everything. Uh, to try out this grounding thing. But walking on these wood chips barefoot is not very fun. People with really tender feet would not be able to do it at all. Still mushrooms growing out here. Okay, so it hasn't, well it might hit 160 here. Yeah, so in just in a day it went from 140 to 160. <laughs> um, and I don't really want it to go, supposedly, I'm gonna do a little bit more research before I do it, but supposedly um, at 160, and especially anything over 160, it could, all, it could be killing the good bacteria inside of the heap and I want to keep that good bacteria. So technically if it hits 160 I need to flip it to aerate it which will cool it down and then it'll, it'll heat back up over time. <clears throat> but like I said, before I do that, because it's going to be quite a job to, to do that, I'm going to do a little bit more research and see what is the exact temperature that I can let it get to. But you can, as you can see it actually has sunk down several inches just from yesterday. I might go ahead and add um, another layer or two of green and brown, which this green right here right next to me on the ground isn't going to be green for very much longer. This grass turns brown really quick, so... Um, but that wouldn't be that big of a deal. I could just, there's plenty of green in here, so I could... When I actually, when I pull it out, I could um, add some in some brown and then put it back in and so that the brown will be nice and mixed up in there. And that might help prevent it from getting all the way to 160. Yeah, it's it's right at 160 degrees right now, so... I'm going to research a little bit more and see when exactly I need to flip it. The pile that's almost done uh, is right at 120, so it's gone down 2 or 3 degrees since yesterday, which is good. It means it's cooling and not still ramping up and heating up. So yeah, so it's the stark contrast of the new heap went from 140 to 160 in less than 24 hours and the old heap went from like 123 to 120 in less than 24 hours so that's, I mean I still probably should move flip the old heap the almost complete heap one or two more times probably I'm assuming I, I did some research and and there is so much information on composting it is like it's a science, it's an art, it is um, kind of very, it's a very large thing. There, what do I, that doesn't make any sense. What I mean is, there's a ton of information from a whole lot of different people, um, but the, the thing is there's like a million different ways to compost and there's a million different, a million different ingredients that you can use to compost and everybody has, you know their idea of what works best um, but in terms of how I want to go about I think I just disturbed that cicada how I want to go about 
turning my compost piles. I think, this is what I was just reading about, I think that's what's gonna work, what is gonna work best for me is just turning it when it hits 160. There's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of people who say um, to maintain safety, like the safety regulations on selling compost and making organic compost <clears throat> is technically that you have to turn it like five times within 15 days for a certain period of time. And it has to stay between like 130 and 170 degrees for a certain amount of time um, to ensure that the bad pathogens and the bad bacteria are dying. I'm not gonna be selling this compost, so I, I'm not too concerned about turning it a certain amount of times in 15 days or whatever. I think that I will end up turning it five times in 15 days the way that this compost pile is heating up. Um, is if I just go by the 160 rule. So it reaches 160, I'll turn it, and then when it reaches 160 again, I'll turn it again. And with a pile like mine that has so much green material in it, it might hit 160 quite a few times and pretty quickly. Which is another thing, in the research I was just doing, I'm thinking that I need way more brown material than what I've been putting in which I can do, and especially now that fall is approaching, I can just collect leaves from people. The leaves that fall off of trees are brown, brown material, so I can collect those, and I could honestly just collect a lot of those, like way more than I need right now, and then um, keep them in bags, put holes in the bags to let air get in, and just let those turn into leaf mold. And then even if it turns into leaf mold, I can use that as a brown, I'm pretty sure. So I could, if I just get a, if I just get a bunch of leaves, I can use those as brown material in the form that they're in when af after they've fallen. Um, but then I can also use them from then on. You know, as they turn into leaf mold, I can continue to use them as a brown material. So I should have, I should be able to get brown material. I'd also like to continue using the wood chips um, as brown material from my chipper shredder and I got the screwdriver. Oh, I need to fix that. Actually, that's what I wanted to do. Shoot, I came all the way back here to the compost, but what I really want to do right now is fix the chipper shredder um, and then chip up some chips. And then I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna pull this pile out. Well, I might go ahead and do this one first just to get that over with, just to turn it one more time. And then I'm gonna turn, pull this one out, put wood chips in it, mix the wood chips in, and then put it back in. <clears throat> that's my goal. I don't know if I'm gonna get all that done today because that's gonna be a large job doing this. And then it takes time to chip up some stuff too, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go fix the chipper shredder, hopefully. <laughs> Put it all back together and then chip up some stuff. <laughs> Look how silly this is. It's like 12 inches long. It's funny. I'm gonna need two hands to do this. Okay, so basically I'm putting the bin underneath this thing so that I can take this off. And when that comes off, it's not supporting the weight of this anymore, so the bin is gonna support the weight of the whole thing. And the reason I have to take this off is because there are two uh, screws holding the two halves of this chipper shredder together behind this bar. And um, they are very deep, which is why I have to get this giant screwdriver. Okay, now I can kind of bend this over here. And here are these holes here. There's two different holes and the screws are that deep. 
and I believe the screwdriver is magnetic, so it should pull the screw out with it, hopefully. Or not. That's okay, I have a tool I can use to get it out. It's not magnetic. I thought it was magnetic, though. It is. Wait, is it? Maybe not. But it did get that screw out. And here's the other one. Man, this is so easy now that I have a proper screwdriver for this. And with this screw, I should be able to access this uh, compartment right here, this fan compartment, to get this piece out. This little tool has come in very handy for this job. Um, there's a little magnetic extender that reaches in and grabs screws. Just like that. Okay. So now, hopefully, I can... Those, hopefully those are the last two screws preventing me from opening this thing up. Indeed, it does appear to be the case. Okay, so inside of here is a little fan, and this is where there was a piece of wood that was making a pretty bad noise inside of here. So I'm gonna see if I can find it. Oh wait. It's not a piece of wood. It's not a piece of wood. I got it. But it's not wood. It was some sort of plastic cap that must have fallen off of something inside here. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. Like actually, I have no idea. If that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, well, it just came off the. Okay. So I don't. I don't know if you can. How well you can see this, but this little white plastic thing here is the fan, and on the bottom of it, there's just a place for this little cap. Um. Which I'm gonna just not put this. I feel like now that this cap has fallen off, it's just gonna fall off again if I put it back on. Um, so I'm just not gonna put it back on. That might be a poor decision, but it seems like, to me, it's just gonna fall off again. So, I actually think that's a good thing. I think that, well, it's a good news, I think, because that means that um, it wasn't a piece of wood, so there, it's unlikely that there's gonna be a piece of wood get back, to get in there. Okay, so just to be clear, this little piece of plastic was like a cap on the bottom of the fan, that little fan thing that's um, inside this machine, and it had just fallen out of its place. And so it was making a lot of noise and spinning around in there. So it might not have been that big of a deal to just let it spin around in there, like it's just a piece of plastic hitting against another piece of plastic. I mean, maybe it could cause damage in the long term, but maybe I could have left it in there. I thought it was a piece of wood, and I thought that the wood could definitely damage the plastic or something, so I thought that I should probably get it out. And I'm not gonna put it back in because I think if I put it back in, it's just gonna fall back out again. So, um, ultimately I think this is good news. Like I think it could have been a lot worse. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm gonna put it all back together now 
and there's like over a dozen screws that I gotta put back together. And then we should be good to go. And that's it. All screws accounted for, put back in their place. Um, putting it together wasn't that mad. Taking it apart was kind of a pain. Uh, but once I got the appropriate screwdriver, this 12 inch long screwdriver, it made it pretty easy putting it all back together. In fact, I liked really, I really liked using this. Um, uh, even for all the screws that I didn't need a 12 inch screwdriver, it still gave me like nice leverage and I could kind of stand up because it was so long. I'll link this to this specific screwdriver in the description. It also came with a, a flathead as well. It feels like really good quality. I really like it. it. Feels really good in the hand. The grip feels nice. It even has a little hole to hang it if you want to. Nice screwdriver. full bin of chips. Well, it's actually quite a lot of material, you know. When they're that finely chopped, they, uh, a lot fits into a small space. And it's pretty heavy. My right arm is struggling right now. So that is gonna go into um, this new, the new pile. But first I'm gonna pull out the old pile, flip it, and then I'll start doing this one. I've been kind of, <laughs> been kind of uh, procrastinating because it's gonna be a lot of work, but I'll get it done eventually. I apologize for the noise, my next door neighbors. My next door neighbor is having someone cut her grass and it's very loud. It's one of those huge 
riding lawnmowers. All right, I finished the, the first compost and then I moved the stuff in front of the second compost out of the way so that I have room to get it out. Um, and then I went and rested for like 15 minutes because this is gonna be a job right here. So I'm gonna get started on that. Sorry for all the time lapses, but this is pretty boring. I don't know how to make this exciting. Okay, I got all the material out, and it is a lot of material. <laughs> I mean, a lot. I have a good bit more wood chips I'm gonna put on it. Uh, there was um, a bit at the bottom, several inches at the bottom that I, I think went anaerobic, which just means there was no oxygen down there. And I think when that happens, that's why there was, there's like this white mildewy powdery um, substance on it. And that's like a bacteria that grows in an anaerobic plate. I think I, I could be wrong, but I don't think that's good. I mean, it isn't good to go anaerobic, first of all, because this type of composting, you need oxygen. So that bottom several inches where it went anaerobic is, um, it's not good. I don't really, um, know exactly what to do about that. I think the wood chips will help a little bit because you know they're larger chunks so they'll keep a little bit of space in there to help oxygen stay in. I mean me me flipping it right now is gonna help obviously but in a couple of days it might be back to the same situation in which case I'll just have to flip it out again but holy moly <sighs> it's a lot of material. Can I commit to flipping this all the time? It'd be really handy if I just had a machine, huh? But there's not really a machine that I could even, not in this current situation. Oh, and I put the mask on because this heap is quite smelly. You know, with all the grass clippings, they just go, they just turn, if they don't, if there's not a lot of brown, if there's not more brown than there is green, then they just turn really smelly and I think that anaerobic portion and the smell, the vapor that's coming off of that might even be mildly toxic or, toxic or something. So just to be safe, I put the mask on. And I could even smell it through the mask, which is impressive. Because <laughs> this mask is pretty legit. So, but it definitely dulled it a whole lot. I'm gonna, um, I don't have a whole lot of time. I need to do this quickly because we're all going to my nephew's birthday party tonight. We're just going out to eat, actually. But I need to get this done. So I'm gonna put the wood chips on. I might even water it a little bit and then get to work again. One hundred and twelve, one hundred and twelve pitchfork loads. I counted every scoop. Not that it matters. I just thought it'd be interesting to know. It took one hundred and twelve scoops to get all that back in. It's a lot of material, and I'm done for today. I got to go shower and get ready to go out to eat for my nephew's birthday. My nephew Asher that helped me do the wood chips one time. I'm exhausted now.